I'm getting the uh, Kearney and Trekker set up here to do a simple cope on this piece of tubing. Uh, it's a little excessive, I'm sure. Probably just use a grinder, but I like using my machines whenever I have the opportunity there. My plan is, is to use this uh, shell mill. This is a, a high-speed steel shell mill, three and a half inches in diameter, so it's the same size as our pipe there. Uh, the only problem is I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to cut one side like the top and then we'll flip the, the uh, tube over 180 and cut the other side because it's just not it's not tall enough there to get the entire tube in one in one shot. I looked through all my cutters and I couldn't find anything that was three and a half in diameter big enough to do that. Even a uh, I was looking for a regular milling cutter that I could use, but this will work right there and once we get it centered it won't take long. So I've got an edge finder in here. I'm just gonna find the center of the tube right now and then we'll set this back in there and do our, our coat. I think we're ready to make our cut. I do have a stop right here. That way, whenever I flip this tube over, we can just flip it over, go right against the stop, and be back in the same position. So, here we go. I don't have a hand wheel on, uh, on this right end of the table, so I'm just gonna be doing this with the feed. I just gotta set it half inch. Just gonna watch it and then uh, stop it. Just watching for the cutter, the flutes to get right up on the inside of that wall there. That looks pretty good. Set a uh, zero point right there. Oh yeah, I think that worked out pretty good right there. All right, that was an easy coat. Took longer to set the machine up than to make the cuts. There we have it. Okay, we're doing the mock-up here on the back of the truck and I'm just uh, seeing how everything is looking and how it's fitting up. It's doing pretty good. You can see I've got a, I got a three foot scale up here just to kind of mimic the uh, top surface of the uh, deck. This is not a critical measurement there, but we, we already mentioned we want to make that like even with the top of the deck there. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm just going to get a measurement of where I want it so that when we go to weld it, I'll just measure it from the face to the uh, edge of the tube there. And that should be good to go. I'll get all this clamped up in a fixture to do the weld and that way it's nice and square and everything there as well. One more thing that we got to do before we weld it, I want to go ahead and get a hole drilled in the bottom of this piece of pipe here, which is going to serve as a pin for the foot that's going to be slid up in there. I want to get that done first so we don't have to do it afterwards. 
and then um, after we get it welded, then we'll start working on the, uh, the, the piece of pipe for the foot. But I'm actually ready to uh, get this guy welded, get it in here so that we can see how the fit is gonna be for the first time. I'm pretty excited about getting to this level here and making some more progress on it. So let's go get that hole drilled and then we'll go get it welded up. And just a quick update. I did go ahead and bring the, uh, the pin out here, the rotating pin and the column and set that up and remeasured it that way because I realized I was measuring to the face of the bushing there and not the uh, flange. So I went ahead and remeasured this and I've got my notes written down on where it needs to be welded at. We're just gonna get the uh, end of the pipe here drilled for the pin. I've decided on a uh, 3 8 diameter pin. I've actually got two different pins on order for McMaster. We have the Lynch pin style that has a retainer that goes around it, and then they have the, uh, the straight pin that has the push button handle on it there as well. I uh, wasn't sure which one was going to work the best, so I just ordered both of them. And, uh, you know, I'll use whichever one I, I think works best on this application. I think I'd mentioned the diameter. We're going to go 3 8 on that. So. I'm gonna drill this one 3 8 and then the, um, the foot that's gonna slide up in there, I'll drill it 25 64 just to get a little extra clearance for the pin to slide through. Stick that drill down a little bit further to clear the clear the hole there. All right, I'll just do some deburring and that'll be finished there. All right, we got the hitch crane all fixtured up here, ready to uh, get it welded together. Uh, my plan is to tack it heavily. We'll probably put four heavy tacks on it. It before I completely weld it up and then we'll take it back out to the truck and actually put everything together and make sure that the, the height and everything is right before I fully weld it up. So making total use of my fireball tools here, we've got the uh, mega square that's working out good. I've also got the magic square here turned into uh, two separate pieces because you can use these as a V block there as well. That's one of the features that Jason designed in this square is that you can use them for V-blocks. So this, this is a perfect application for it right there. All right, and then I'm also using the magnetic shim blocks right here. Those worked out great. We got one on each end there. So we're using the one, two, three block. And then it was the, I believe it was the uh, half inch, uh, half inch blocks above that and everything got it elevated so that it can sit nice and square, clamped down to this table and it's in the center of the pipe right there as well. You can see it's pretty close, looks pretty good. And then of course our mega square is making sure that the, uh, the cross rail and the pipe are perfectly 90 degrees to each other. And of course this makes it in the center. So go in there and uh, tack off the corners there heavily so that it won't fall off. And then we'll go uh, try it onto the uh, back of the truck again. So gonna use the Millermatic, gonna use the dual shield again. This is the perimeters I've been using. You probably can't see that. Uh, wire speed is 250 inches a minute. And um, we got the volts. I, I lowered it by half. It was at 25 volts. And having a lot of people telling me that uh, sometimes the uh, little worm tracks you get is a result of having the voltage too high. But I like to, I like to adjust this dual shield on this machine here to where that thing, you can visually see it and you can just hear it. It just hums while you're pouring metal to it right there. So we lowered a little bit, but you know, we're just gonna try that and it'll probably weld out fine in that position right there or that, those perimeters anyway. All right, so we'll get set up and uh, we'll go ahead and start tacking this guy off. Good heavy tacks on that side. So we should be good to be able to uh, rotate this thing now. 
it's just too far under there to try to get it with the, uh, let me see. I could probably get one more if I go ahead and just go ahead and move that out of the way. I can get this and get three of them on there. Yeah, that's tacked in good. All right, we'll unclamp it and flip it over. All right, let's go test fit it. I've been using this uh, screw jack here just to kind of hold it level. So we'll, we'll use it again. All right. Go ahead and grab the pin and we're going to uh, stand this thing up and test it for the first time. Look at it with this actually supporting the, uh, the boom on it. Just going to put two of the bolts in here to hold it together for now. other side this side all right that'll be enough to hold it right there and just that little bit it's gliding pretty good there's your first look at a halfway assemble right there but it gives you the overall look of how the, the main structure is gonna gonna look right there I think this height is going to work out good, I hope. So, so far, it's real easy to spin with my hand. That's all going to change, you know, as we get weight on it. Nothing's going to sit exactly square, but uh, still got to get that foot made. That's going to be the next thing. We'll get this welded in, and while that's cooling, we'll go ahead and start on our foot. I'm happy with it. I'm really excited to actually get this thing hooked up and test it. That's, the, that's what the plan is. As soon as we get it ready, we're going to put it to the test and actually try to pick something up and put it in the truck. Looking good. Let's get on to the next phase. Would help if I had my welding hood on. And maybe finish buttoning up my shirt. I'm gonna make this real easy and just weld it in the flat position on all four sides. That right there is one reason I dislike MIG welding. I just had a problem inside here. I don't know what it is. It's not feeding the wire. So I got to stop, fix a welding machine. Yep, that's your problem.
out of wire. You know, that's, this really got me because I thought that I had already put the new spool on here and uh, I just totally forgot. I must have kept this on there because I still had a little bit of wire. But, so, let's come over here to the welding department. So this, okay, flux cord arc welding with external gas, 045. So this is what I need right here. Brand new spool. I thought that I had put that on there. I, I forgot that it was sitting up here. So this was actually the, uh, the spool of wire that was given to me by uh, Todd and Jason over at weld.com back whenever I was visiting them at uh, their shop. Uh, Todd had to uh, grab this spool of wire and this one right here and give to me. So I'll get this thing out and go ahead and get it loaded up on the miller now. Select 730. This wasn't part of the uh, plan for today, but maybe some of you guys want to see this. I don't think I've ever showed changing out the, the wire on the uh, Miller-Matic before. So, <clears throat> got to get this one out. This last piece. All right, there's our fresh spool of Select 730. Take the end, it's all bent up and clip that off. Hold on to it, don't let it unravel on you. You gotta get it started in the liner. And close up the two wheels right there. And then make sure that you're using, for those that are unaware, these are the rollers that I purchased from uh, Miller sized for 045 wire but they're serrated so they have grippiness there to to grab that wire and push it out otherwise uh, when i was using the, the slick uh, grooves there's too many times where the rollers would just spin and they wouldn't push the wire through just screwing you up so the see uh the grooved the serrated wheels are the way to go and then uh I turned the gas off so it doesn't waste it doing this right here. Get that guy back on there. This is like a little felt wiper that I had on there. We'll go ahead and push this guy back down on the wire. clamp it's a little clamp that holds it on that helps clean the wire off as it's uh, being pulled through the liner all right I'm gonna speed it up add it on 250 so I'll set it back up there put the contact tip back on screw it on hand tight and we're ready to go I got the cup up there on the table.
Not working for me. It is not working for me. I still got pinholes and worm tracks, so I don't know what I don't know what the deal is. So we got her welded up, and it's not my finest work. I'm not too fondly proud of it. I went ahead and put another bead over the top of, of the ones you saw me do there. So I'm still having uh, worm tracks and pinhole issues with these welds. I thought maybe even putting a new spool of wire on there would, would make that better. But apparently, it actually seems to be worse now than the wire that I was running on there. But I don't, I'm not going to say that the wire has anything to do with it. So I'm still trying to figure out what's, what's going on. And one suspicion that I have is I'm wondering if the gas should be swapped out. I have had this bottle of gas for a while now. I just can't think of how long. It's probably two to three years I've had this bottle of gas. And it's never been an issue. I've never had to think about it because usually you run through it pretty fast. But I'm wondering if these gas bottles have a shelf life on them. If the gas starts going bad, it doesn't do this job after it sits for a long period of time. I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to call Wesco and talk to them about that. Maybe try to do a little research on my end to see if there's anything going on with this that, that I'm not realizing is happening. It's very frustrating. I've used this process for years and it always worked great. So just trying to track down what the gremlins are. All right, so this is welded up now. I'm going to go put it back on the truck. We're going to start getting some measurements so that we can get our pipe for our, uh, our foot cut. So this is the pipe we're gonna use for the foot. Just wanna get a uh, rough measurement of where we need to uh, cut that. So my idea is that we're gonna have a, um, I'll have a series of holes drilled in this pipe right there so that this is easily adjustable. Uh, kind of like the, you know, the foot on a trailer jack, about the same thing. So we'll probably have it go up in here about a foot or so, have it extend down here, you know, so I don't know, let's just start getting some rough measurements of how long it really needs to be. So we've got about 13 and a half. That's almost equal the, from the ground up to this and the, uh, the bar to the tailgate because I had set that at 13 and a half. That's funny. So about 30, that's actually about 13 and three quarters right there. So I'm just going to do some thinking here off camera to figure out the length that I want, because an idea that I had was, I think you could actually, if I wanted to uh, hook this thing up and drive down the road with it, it, it should be fine. Not with the column on, you take the column off, but this piece here, the T-bar the and then this cross beam right here could actually just stay on the truck, you know, instead of having to take it off and lug it in the back, just keep it mounted on here and locked in and uh, have enough clearance here so that you're gonna clear the road. So I might have it where that foot, you know, goes all the way up in here or near to the top of the pipe there. So I'll figure it out and I'll bring you back when I, when I do. I decided on a length of 18 inches for the foot. And uh, the reason behind that is um, the distance that I can fit this up inside there is just over 18 inches before it would hit the bottom of the bushing there. So that's plenty of material that will extend down and be able to sit on the ground and we'll still have a series of holes drill this to adjust the height as needed. So that's gonna be it right there, 18 inches and we are ready to cut. I think we're at a safe enough length here that I can put this in the six jaw here and face these ends, make them look nice and clean. Just won't take any heavy cut, but it'll handle it. Chamfer and tool. that <clears throat> I 
we'll have a hole here that's going to hold the foot all the way up inside the pipe whenever it's not being used and then what we're going to do is step down and we're going to cut a we're going to drill a hole uh, so perfectly level and everything i've got it written down is uh 15 and a quarter from the base so i got to add a quarter inch to the uh, i got a plate i'm going to weld on the end so 15 and a quarter to the hole and then i'll just step to each side of that i don't know maybe about every half inch or so and we'll just have a uh, series of holes actually i think it's going to be right in this area here that we will do that let's see oh sorry a little further down so it's going to be a little bit down here towards this end of the the pipe well we'll have a few holes here drilled for adjustment just getting it spotted in with a uh, spotting drill i think we're going to go ahead and use our vortex drill bit right here this is the 2564 so we'll have a little bit of clearance for a um, for the 3 8 bolt or the pin i mean to to go through there like butter that worked nice get that bolt and just uh, check the fit anyway that's a 3 8 bolt I think there's going to be plenty of clearance there for um, for the for the lynch pin to line itself up so I think that's going to work fine right there all right we'll go ahead and step off down here to our other side and get this side drilled so this is our main hole that's going to be, you know, everything is perfectly level and center. This is the hole that is going to uh, line up. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and get this hole drilled. I haven't been doing any kind of calculations or measurements or anything on, uh, you know, the, the center to center distance that I want on these. So I just thought I would go ahead and get that one drilled and then step it over and see how far I need to go. So this is just for just some adjustments. That's all it's for. All right, so we're on center there. Let's see what half inch looks like. If that's too much. I think half inch is probably going to work pretty good. It still gives you a little bit of meat in between the, um, in between the holes. So if I go to 3 eighths, it's going to be right on the edge of the hole. So I think to give it a little space, I'll just go ahead and Let's just make it an even half inch. I'll go ahead and spot some in. Just use an incremental on the, uh, the DRO here. And we'll get a few of these guys spotted in and then come back and just drill them all with the drill bit. All right, let's go the other way. What do you think? That might give us uh, plenty of adjustment right there. It should be four inches. I think that's gonna be enough. I'm gonna leave it with that. We'll go ahead and drill the holes. This is that drill bit we're using. It's that Vortex style. The uh, end of the drill is ground, sort of like a step drill. And where it really, this, where this drill really shines, I think, is when you're using this for hand drilling out operations. They even have the three flats cut on there so the drill truck won't, you know, won't slip in the drill truck. But because of the design there, it reduces the amount of tool pressure that you're putting on a cut there. And it makes it a lot easier to push it down through steel. So I'm just using it because I got them and testing them out any chance I get over here in the middle just to kind of uh, put some time on them and see what the benefits are of uh, using them. But so far, I would recommend them for any kind of hand drilling application, especially you guys out in the field. You know, maybe you got a set of drills on your, on your work truck, your fabrication business, you know, where you've got tools to... You got to use cutting tools, might be good for you there. It does make going through there really easy. I'm going to go ahead and chamfer both sides of that just to help 
make it a clean hole and then in, in the uh, pin to line up whenever it's going through there. I've got a stop set on my quill. I just come down and hit the stop. It'll make them the same depth, every single one of them. And just rotate the uh, pipe around, line it back up with a drill and repeat the process. All right, we got all of our holes drilled. Everything's deburred. You guys, I think you're gonna like this. So, how about that for a foot? <laughs> I just found this on my uh, material rack. And uh, yeah, it's been outside for a long time. I think I had found this out there on my metal rack and I saved it, brought it in for a project. And I think it'd be perfect for a foot for this right here. That's about the perfect size that I was thinking, quarter inch thick, looks like about six inch diameter. So I think that's it right there. Unfortunately, it is rusty and crusty, so it needs a real good cleaning. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that now because uh, my evaporust would work great for this, but I don't wanna wait around. I'm gonna go ahead and wire brush it and then uh, hit it with a flap disc and get all the corrosion off of it. And then that way we can go ahead and get this thing welded up because I wanna see this together today, so. We're gonna get started cleaning that up now. Before we weld that foot on here, let's go ahead and just test our fit of this. So this is uh, all the way up in the closed position right there. Seems like it's gonna fit in there just fine. And then, uh, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, right? Yeah, so it's fifth one, that should be that should be about where it's at in a normal level position right there. That's going to work pretty good. Let me go ahead and uh, let's rotate this thing back around and see how it levels out. Let's give this a check here, see what's going on with it. All right, well. I think at that point it's just a matter of kind of wiggling it around like that. All right, I think that's gonna work. I think that's gonna be good right there. We'll use our positioner to weld the foot. Go back on with some more of this weld aid uh, anti-spatter onto the chuck here. Got the uh, plate cleaned up, wire brushed. I'm gonna let this be the bottom since there's more pitting on it. And then we'll, uh, I clean that up right there. We'll use that to, for our weld surface. We are just about ready for our first test. So this is it sitting on its foot for the first time. 
under its own support there. Got the jack out of the way. And I think everything is actually working out pretty good. I don't really have this bolt tight right here. But I lowered it, I lowered the foot one notch to kind of pick this up a little bit. So it's sitting down on that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna put the, uh, the column back in. I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling this thing with the cylinder and the boom portion of it. Get this thing together so that we can actually do a uh, real test with this. So that's the, that's the next phase. Get it all together, get something out here. I don't know what, I'm gonna grab something and we'll, we'll do a test. All right, we got our main boom on here. And the cylinder just attaches here and here. I'm starting to get a little concerned of the amount of weight that is gonna be in this complete unit to set it down. It might be one of those deals where um, I may not be wanting to pick this thing up very much. I do still plan on probably refurbishing the cylinder it's just gonna come later. It doesn't have to be done right now. I just figured once we get the thing built, we kind of start moving on to the fine details. That's when we can see about taking the cylinder apart and we'll have us a uh, video tour on, on uh, that segment. Because it might have to be modified to accept standard seals. It's usually what happens with these kinds of things here. Let's see if I can manhandle this thing up here. This is what I've been concerned with the whole time. It is pretty stout. All right, <laughs> there we go. That was the handle for the jack. A little short handle that I make for it. We have some action there. I went ahead and I, I had tightened up these bolts before we installed it there, and it made it, it made this piece a lot more rigid. So I wanted to point that out that that's that works really well to uh, kind of tighten it up. This is me pulling on it, shaking it around. All right. And then the uh, start of our actual crane is going in. I need to finish putting the other bolts in here and tighten these up. And so we have another piece that slips up into here. That's your adjustment, you know, in your stick out. So I'll get that in there too. Getting close to our first test. We have a hitch crane. It's not 100% yet, but we are almost there. And it's, uh, it's looking good. It's, it's great to finally see it up, you know, and ready, ready to go, what it's going to look like. And I'm excited about that. I think it's going to work, guys. I really think this is going to work, and I'm excited to try it. I'm really happy with the way it's coming out. So here's a couple of thoughts uh, as we're going into this. Let me mention a couple other things. So one of the ideas that I had, so this is the actual uh, jack handle right here. I've just got this short one that I make because it makes it really easy when you're just trying to get it up quick. And then, um, so anyway, this is the main jack handle. And what I want to do is just find a piece of pipe or something and I want to use this as leverage, as a handle, to be able to rotate this thing around, Whenever, especially when you get a load on it. It's going to be a little hard to twist it, so you need a handle. So my idea is just having a piece of pipe, you know, either on this side or that side, welded to it, that you can stick this guy in there and use it as a handle to come around and, and rotate it. So that's still got to be done because I haven't, you know, did that yet. I was going to point out, so this is the actual handle that's mounted on it from the factory. And it was uh, mounted right there, bolted in there like that. And my idea was I was going to put that back on there. And of course, if I did, it needs to be kind of down here, you know, to use it down here. But the problem with this is I don't really want this in the way because it's going to be hard enough to, to handle that thing by itself when you're trying to move it around. So whenever I put this in the back of the truck, I don't want this handle sticking out, causing it harder to load it into the back of the truck there so i think i'm going to eliminate this all together and we might just get a couple pieces of pipe like that and just maybe weld on on uh, two sides maybe so that we can just use this guy right here as a uh, handle to spin that so that's going to be on the list uh, for next up that we're going to do 
and I think that's about it. I may play around with this. This is how I set up that chain years ago when I first got it because I didn't want it hanging in the middle. But we may modify that. And I think that was the that was the main thing right there. But it's uh it's more rigid than I thought it was gonna be. And it's actually pretty easy to uh, spin. Spins pretty easy. So we just got to get a load on it and see how it's going to react and how it's going to uh, handle with some weight pulling on it. So that's the next phase right there. The uh, My uh, mics are about to die. I need to go put them on charge. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, I'm going to finish getting everything cleaned up today. Put everything away. I got everything out. I'm going to find something that I can bring over here that's kind of heavy that we can pick up and use as our first test piece. I might try to get one of the vices out of the out of the garage out there. I'm not, I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to find something that we can pick up and uh, we'll do a little test on it. But it might be in the morning when we uh, do the test because I need to get this place straightened up and I got to get something out here for it. But um, that'll be the that'll be the next scene right there. All right. I couldn't stand it. I wanted to go ahead and make a lift with this thing to prove it and make sure it works. And I've even got a vice out here, like I said I was gonna do. So let me show you what we're gonna do. Our uh, very first test lift with the truck hitch crane. So this is an Emirate vice that was given to me by one of my viewers named uh, Reed Ziegler. I've been holding on to this for quite a while. This is gonna be one of the projects that I wanna get to pretty soon. I've just been kind of holding on to it. I've never showed her anything, but you're gonna see it now. There's a big boy Emirate vice in there that needs some work, needs some help. There's some broken parts on there. It's got to be fixed. But Reed sent that to me to, and give it to me and said, hey, do whatever you want to do with it. I've been holding on to it because I want to fix it and I want to uh, get it out of that crate and check it out. But we're going to use it as a test subject for our hitch crane. This is going to be the very first lift that we have done with the uh, hitch crane. So I went ahead and just got it strapped up and... Um, made sure it was level and everything and now we'll go ahead and and pick it up so this is by no means any kind of load test on what this thing is going to be handled i plan on doing a lot heavier load test than what this is but this is something that i had right here available and i thought it would work perfect for a first lift i know it's probably going to weigh somewhere between 150 200 pounds so we're not picking up a lot of weight but it's going to prove if this is going to work or not all right This one's heavy enough to where I can use either the short handle or the, uh, the long handle. I will say that I like the placement of the hydraulic jack much better than it when it was set up as an engine lift because it's way down here. I always had to bend over. It looks like we're going to have plenty of height here for other things that we want to pick up. And the way that this thing lowers all the way down is I should be able to get the boom down here low to the ground to be able to strap and pick something up. So let me move the cart out of the way. Look at that. That moves easy. And I did not grease it or oil it or anything yet. It's still just like I, just like I machined it. And it swings to the center of the bed just perfectly. <laughs> So this is where I was talking about I need to get something on here so I can use this pipe to be able to uh, rotate the load. But I think for now, I can probably just do maybe just something like that. It's working good. See how it works just trying to twist it like this. That'll work too. <laughs> I'm happy with this. I need to get a little bit of lube on that shaft. I just didn't even think about it when we put it together. That's going to be awesome. You guys see that? Yeah. 
So you can come out here anywhere that you want to. We can set this thing up over on this side of the truck if we want to. I've got room that I can extend it out more. I can even bring it a little closer to the tailgate. So it's kind of a universal deal for the back of the truck right here. And I am just super happy with this right here. So successful lift, a couple hundred pounds, but you know, this is the kind of stuff right here that the crane is intended to be built for. Something that's heavy enough to where it's awkward for somebody to pick it up, you know, hurting your back. Uh, maybe it's a big bulky thing, you know, maybe it's not so big and heavy, but it's just kind of bulky and hard to pick up, such as a generator. Generators are heavy enough, one person doesn't want to have to pick it up by themselves and uh, put it in the back of the truck or, you know, big piece of log, you know, wood or a vice, some kind of machine tool, you know, anything like that. Let's go ahead and uh, lower it down. Another reason why I like this, uh, this uh, unit I got, I like this handle on the, the relief valve. There you go. Perfect. So you want to offload this, we'll just repeat the process. We'll have to get in there and hook it up. Well, I think this is gonna be excellent. It's gonna be a nice tool to utilize anytime I need. It's a portable system. And I'm just looking forward to actually getting something that we can actually use it for. So whenever that happens, I'll be sure to take the camera with me so that I can show you, you know, what we're gonna be using to pick it up. So for now, we've got some more fine tuning to do. I definitely wanna get the pipe welded onto the column there so that we can utilize the handle bell to rotate that thing around. And then, um, I can't remember, there's a couple more fine details, but I'll, I'll get to that and share it with you. I want to clean the thing up, you know, we'll do a rattle bomb paint job on it just to kind of make it look consistent and look fresh. I think that's about it. So I'm going to start breaking it back down and we'll start working on the uh, fine details. But I was excited to finally get this uh, first little lift uh, for you guys to see as well. And uh, I'm happy with it. Mm -hmm.